All right. Going live now. Restarted the music for you. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. We do appreciate it. I forget where we're at now. Um, how many subs do we have? Let's see, let's see. Creeping up on 2,500. That's not too bad. So, if you like what you're seeing, if you've been following the project, a lot of people ask how they can help. Like, what can I do to help the project? Little things like this. Doesn't cost you anything. Doesn't cost you anything. You don't have to subscribe on Twitch. Get the free subscribe on YouTube. Then we can point to that number and say, see, look how many people are interested in the project. Coding caffeine. Hello. Howdy. Howdy, howdy. Hey, Mehmet Rice. How's y'all's week been? Scene loader. Vector load sub scenes. I may have had my Red Bull too early. Hey, Zukin. My Red Bull may have been too early. What if my what if my Red Bull energy leaves me now? I'm assuming you guys have fancy purple Red Bulls in the U.S. as well. Coding Caffeine said, making an RSS feed reader with ChatGPT at the moment. What's what's the um, what's the chat providing you? Like, what's uh, ChatGPT providing you in, in terms of value in this implementation? Soldiers, Fate, hello, Chaz Solo, hello. All the code? Oh, it's just coding it for you. Oh, I see what you're saying. I get it. I, re I read it as you're making an RSS feed reader that is then complemented with some functionality from ChatGPT. Not that you're actually coding one using ChatGPT. Now, it makes more sense to me now. It really doesn't. Is that for pleasure or for fun? Good morning, Goblin. Good morning, Dark Inside. If that is your real name. You're doing painting tomorrow for your new place. So, I should be moved into it by the end of next week. Congrats, Dark Inside. Coding Caffeine said, doing it for pleasure. Well, oh, cool. That's cool, Dan. Right on. Gnome Fights. Raiding with a party of three. What's up, Gnome Fights? Slash... Brown Butcher. Thank you for your raid. And thank you for your three month sub. Fuck. Excuse me. That Red Bull is going to have the opposite effect on me. I know it. Oh no. The Red Bull. It, it, it gave me wings, but... Like Icarus, I flew too close to the sun. My wings are going to melt before the stream is done. <clears throat> Fly, touch the sun on the wings of an angel. 
I haven't listened to Iron Maiden in a little bit. I need some Iron Maiden. Man, if I had a fancy setup like Zookin where I could listen to my own music and not have it show up on YouTube and have YouTube get all angry at me and stuff, then every once in a while I, I might listen to some stuff like that. But for now, for now, I'm just going to keep it with the Eminem OST. OMG. Um, do you go to concerts much? A lot of good bands go through Germany. Uh, we haven't gone as much as we'd like in recent years, but Jasmine and I are both concert people and we look forward to festivals. Jasmine's always gone to fest festivals. Germans love their metal festivals. And she's no exception. Um, and then we went to our first festival together last year. And it was a lot of fun. With her little crew of people that go. What's up Hashpipe? Doing pretty good. Hope you're doing good as well. Enjoying your new change of scenery. Um... But yeah, I've always I've I've always enjoyed going to some shows. Going to uh go see Robert's band play next month. That's gonna be exciting. Goblin said, I've been listening to Billy Tennant recently, just checking out their discography. They got some fucking fire songs I slept on. Oh. Uh huh. Billy Tennant is fire, the other kids say. You youngins in your fires. Ashpipe said, loving it up here. Much nicer than where I was. Got to catch up. Yeah, man, we do. We need to catch up. But I'm I'm glad that it's a, it's a better scene for you. <clears throat> Bruh. Dark inside. Did you just bruh me? Did you just bruh me? Don't bro me if you don't know me. Indeed I did, sir. Oh. Uh. Fielder Fielder said just saw Ram I just saw Ramstein in October. If you haven't seen them, it's a must. I haven't seen them live. I think Jasmine probably has at one festival or another. <clears throat> when you guys are talking about Weezer, you don't, uh, it sounds like there's a conflict. One person does, one person doesn't like Weezer. Um, I accidentally saw them at Coachella a long, long time ago. It was a really fun Coachella. Only went once. It's when I lived out in California. Um, it was the one where Bauhaus played. It was like it was like old timers Coachella. It was like Bauhaus. Um, uh, Bauhaus, New Order, I think. Um, Gang of Four. If these barrels are this big, then these boxes can be much bigger. 
Why are these crates so small? Let's make the crates bigger. Poor John's out there somewhere like, guys, guys, are you gonna start using prefabs at some point when you do this? John, I will convert all of the random crap I throw in here to be prefabs at some point, I promise you. I promise you. Are those loot crates you're putting in to monetize the game more? More to serious they are. Announcing the arrival of loot crates. Loot crates. <clears throat> um. Say hey, Dargus. Fanaticist Fabrizio. Hello. Fabrizio, I don't know. Did I ask, are you Portuguese? Are you Brazilian? And if so, how do I say hello? In your language. American, grandparents, Italian. Man, dang it. I guess that's cool enough. All the all the Fabricios I know in real life are, are uh, from Brazil. Literally every single one of them. One of my one of my favorite Fabricios um, I used to work with in uh, Hamburg, and he's from Brazil. But his last name I'm not gonna give it here. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna dox him. But his last name is the most German last name ever, <laughs> and uh, it's like mm, when's your family get to when when's your family get to Brazil? Hmm. Right after the war. Hey, Quixana. I'm assuming he comes from a family of scientists. <clears throat> Dark Inside said the former owner of where I'm moving has like over 1,000 CDs, like I'm talking like enough to have a store full of them easily and I haven't even put a dent into them trying to pack them up and give them back as there's there's an entire three big dual shelving units full of them. Man. Portuguese Fabrizio with a C. Italian is with a Z. Oh, that's actually helpful. Thank you. That'll be a helpful, that'll be helpful for me moving forward. Then I'll be able to spot folks. Fielder, um, we had a, we had an Uber driver when we were visiting Austin. <laughs> that was basically kind of the, same deal. Same deal. Is it okay to ask for another stress test without being banned from chat? Yeah, I'm not going to ban you for from chat for asking that especially since you're one of the you're one of the locals i know you're just being you're just you know doing that thing doing that thing you guys do no harm in it no harm in it i won't i don't take offense if you're like some rando that came in here and being very demanding then that would not be good then you would incur the wrath
Hash pipe. Yeah, you shoulda. You, you, you should, sorry. Not you shoulda. But also you shoulda. What's in the barrel? Well, you're going to have to get in here and you'll have to use, uh, you'll have to use commands to figure that out. Apparently, according to Brown Butcher, uh, n no meat, I think. Or what'd you say? Did you say it was, you, it was waifu meat? That's weird. <sighs> no blood. Jeez. You guys are pretty extreme. Extreme slash smell barrel. Yeah, that'll work. That may actually work. You guys, you just don't even know. A sensual lick barrel. <laughs> I don't know that we're gonna add sensual lick in there, Dargus. We'll put it. We'll put it on the you know to be discussed feature backlog. <laughs> I don't. I don't know that we've got that command. You guys could barely be trusted with taste and smell. Jeez. No telling what we're going to walk up on. Cast detect illegal activities. Oh, you know what? Speaking of. Speaking of, we, um, I haven't, I haven't. I haven't tested this yet. I need to shit. I actually need to catch up on testing some of the stuff that Ali's put in recently. Ali put in the ability for us to detect. Let me write that down so I don't forget it. Then it'll it'll remind me to do like a bunch of other dig a bunch of these up. Um test uh mud action um, we can now detect buffs in uh, spell spell conditions. I think on players. So, like, if you've got C and Viz, um, now we can do we can do like, well, I mean, we can make any ability we want and have it work. But so, in theory, we could have detect impure thoughts as a ability and then we could have that work with the uh the system so that's pretty tight sean do not pull until server builds all caps okay i'm not i'm not going to I pulled earlier, but don't pull now. When did I pull last? 33 minutes ago, I believe. But I'm not trying to get into game. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to be placing barrels literally all night. Why do I always do this while you are alive? Well, it's a good week to do it, Ali. My dear friend Ali, I forgive you. After server reboots, you should check out my slick merchant panel. Oh, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Dargus said, Ali, if you weren't so useful, this would be unforgivable. You, you sure are lucky right now, Ali. You're lucky that you do some of the coding. Otherwise, we would not be putting up with your bullshit. <laughs> We'd be having none of that. Turkan, the gates, my friend. I need to say that with more of a Russian accent. The gates, my friend. Sehr gut. Good. 
Hey, MMO Pug. Shifty Gnome may have rubbed off on me. Brazing. Slash, slash rubbed off. Slash rubbed off. Wait, what? Yeah. Slash rub is going to be a good one. We got it in. It, it, there's already a quest. Slash spit. Slash. Mmm. Uh, you almost got me to say it out loud. How freaking dare you. Can you rub a friend? Uh, maybe. Probably. We're an adult game. We're not for kids. Do you hear that, YouTube? Uh, quests for emotes. Well, we've talked, we've actually joked about that for a few years now, right? Because everybody's like, what about the butt scratch? Like, you know, basically animation. It's like, what if it's an emote that you could get? And, but you had to get a, you had to get a, you had to do a quest for it. Brown Butcher, now you've gone too far. Just because you changed your name does not mean I won't hold you accountable for some for, you know, bad things that you're doing. You know better. Don't make me, don't, don't make me, uh, dad shame you. Brown Butcher, you've disappointed me. It wasn't me, it was gnome fights. I swear, guys. I had nothing to do with it. Be cool if the uber ba big bads of the game gave emotes. Kill the uber vampire lord and you can like cross your arms like a vampire in a casket. Um, sure. Why don't we do some shit like that? Why not? Why not? It's our game. We can do what we want, right guys? Liz Biscuit! How, how are you doing today, Liz? Are you struggling less with Unity today than you were when you came in at the, at the tail end of the stream on uh, Tuesday? So I, I've got to confess, I, uh, I'd really plan to go go do some jujitsu this morning, but I woke up with zero energy, zero, none, not a damn bit of energy. So I did not do that. I didn't do it. I was lazy. Woke up today and my cup of motivation was empty. Yeah, Liz, it was, it was that, yeah, that's what happened with me. I just, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I mean, I guess I could, right? Like nothing was really preventing me, but I just lack of discipline, man. Hey, Justin Beard. <sighs>
So it's a holiday weekend for you, most of you, right? I mean, most of you are in North America, so it's a holiday weekend. You guys have any plans? Your bobble queuing or anything? Means more work for a nonal? Well, that's no fun. Holiday on Monday here in the UK too? Oh yeah, it's a holiday on Monday here in Deutschland. Yep, Mem Day weekend, supposedly bonus XP on P99 Green. Oh, that sounds like fun. Stabby the Robot says this is it. Playing some sweater, some smoke tour, and uh, watching Twitch. How big's the sweater player base at this point? Oh yeah, we're barbecuing on Sunday. Turrican and the Garden Gang and I will all be uh, barbecuing. I got a lot of garden work I need to get done starting tomorrow, guys. Not very big. They're down to five servers. Hmm. Justin said, I cut my beard, my life fell apart. Sucks. Well, if that's all that happened, my dear Samson, then you just need to, you need to focus on growing your beard back out. Life problems fixed. Wow, these are big barrels. Maybe I should... Check and make sure I don't have too many, uh... I have to come run around in here and just see if it looks... janky or something. I may have to shrink these. Can I actually run around in here? Now Ollie's got me worried. I'm gonna make these some little pony kegs. Bet you could fit a bunch of dwarves in those barrels and float them down the river. You know, Zukin, I bet you before it's all said and done, Ali, Ali will make it so that we can do that. The game was good, but the barrels were really weird. IGN, I could see, I could see us flubbing it on that. Is IGN still a thing? IGN's a massive thing? Is it a massive thing or do they have massive like actual readership? There's a difference. Are there carpet and tapestry assets yet? So we've got, yeah, we've got a couple assets that um, Goblin has created that are not, they haven't been placed yet in game. Some like 2D rugs, some some rugs and some window treatments and um, some other things. They're just not in, they're not in game. We need it. We need to get them in game. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like I, I, I'm just kidding. I, I think I've seen articles about IGN or articles from IGN or whatever. 
It's just, um, things are a lot different than when I first got in the industry. Like when I first got in the industry, man, did we really go out of our way to kiss the ass of, uh, um, sort of the gaming, the gaming press. There's a, I remember there was an evening where, um, Bill Trost and I, was there, I think there might've been a couple other people, but it was like Bill and I got flown up to San Francisco to spend the evening playing pool with editors of different gaming magazines slash websites like Rob Smith from PC Gamer and Andy McNamara from Game Informer and all these guys. And like, and it was funny cause we got like media training on the way before we went up there. And so it was like, you know, be sure to hang out with them and be sure to talk to each person and, you know, let them win at pool or whatever. I was like, I suck at pool. So that's going to be pretty easy dog. It was just, it was just such a weird thing where it was like, all right, guys, now's our chance. Now's our chance to make them like us. Yeah. Just kind of. We should, you know, what if we're just, what if we're just, what if we're just cool to each other? And people that really like us, really like us. And people that don't like us, that's okay too. They cannot like us. Um, just somewhere else. Because I'm not going to go out my way to try to make some rando like us. If you guys like us, then we're doing our job. Trade, trade, um, trade all of the, uh, all of the the press types um, for for you guys any day. You guys are where it's at, dog. <clears throat> you guys are pretty cool. Unless you turn on us. Don't you forget, at one point, Benedict Arnold was a cool guy, too. Ali's watching y'all, literally. Where is this tavern? What subscene are you in? And how far down do I need to go to be able to get you in the subscene that I want you in? Follow me down here, stool round. Gnome fights. That is enough filleting for one day, sir. We're keeping a PG-13 in here. Isan, What's up? Thank you for 26 months. My dear fellow. Mm. Press can say what they want, what they like, but we will be the ones actually playing. Exactly, Liz. That's why you're more important to us. Now, if you happen to be a member 
of the press and you're also a part of our community. Well then cool. That's fine. That's good. It's kind of like if you happen to be a content creator or like ultra cool streamer person or YouTube person or whatever. That's cool. Welcome. But but it, I don't know that it makes sense for us to like go out of our way to be like, hey, come be our friend. We know who you are. I shift back and forth in here lurking. Oh, why am I just adding that stuff in there? It doesn't belong in there. It belongs over here. What are you doing? Droop the Rogue says, I've been playing EQ2 lately for the first time since 06. I've fallen in love with their player housing. It's so much better than EQ1. Are there any plans currently for any type of player housing in m and And if so, what kind of housing instance or like Vanguard, the actual plots in the world? So there is, there is, um, there are plans for player housing in our game. Yes. And players can own shops. And whoa, that's not the right thing. Um, and stuff like that. So yeah, there's definitely um, there. We've got aspirations on that front. Um, and excuse me, Mortis, are you really going to start with these nuts on a Thursday already? Um, Droop, yeah, so player housing is something we will be uh, playing with. It will not be instanced. Um, when you when you run around in a city and you look, a lot there are a lot of doors, and a lot of those doors are marking player housing. Or player rentable structures may be the more sort of neutral term. Since um, you can use, we're going to facilitate like you uh, <clears throat> facilitate you being able to um, have your own shop and things like that. So far, we know Justin Beard's going to have a coffee shop. You know, Brown Butcher is going to do a grocery and gnome fight club. As you can say, Mortis, you may have to purchase the ogre accommodation, perhaps. To fit, to fit your Franken beans in. When will Fielder's Mance be ready? Uh, I guess right after you get in and start grinding out some cash, it's not going to be cheap, dog. You guys are being very randy today. OD562 says... I'm sure it's been said before, but this area is giving me major Carnor's castle vibes. Could just be the color palette in small rooms. It hasn't been said before, but hey, that's cool. Appreciate it. This is just a tiny um, outer garrison for one of the factions. There's a little garrison here in the city, um, but it will be it will be a place that, depending on your faction, uh, you may actually be in here fighting and killing stuff. So. <clears throat> Droop says my D&D character currently is Dortum Underkeg Dortmunderkeg and is searching for some fabled hops been one of the more fun characters I've played nice I have I have three hops growing on my windowsill now that when they get bigger I'm going to take to the garden Droop said, I'd love to just brew fancy uh, 
Fancy times of ale and spirits. Fancy types of ale and spirits. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really wanting to... Um, I'm really, really wanting to see what we come up with on that front. Like, uh, I know Ollie's, Ollie's got some real passion in this area as well with all of his UO and Star Wars Galaxy love. So there's, there's passion on the team. Multiple people are wanting to see it. And, uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. What kind of hops? Um, I'd have to look at the packet again. It came from a uh, a company that I've ordered from that do like um, a lot of heirloom variety stuff, and I would have to look at what the actual like name of the hops are. I don't know. <clears throat> but yeah, OD. Five, six, two. We don't have any other ODs in chat, so I'm just gonna call you Odie. Is it is does OD stand for something? Um is it OD like olive drab, like the military uniform color, or old dudes. I like it. You're probably in good company. Justin said, I'm glad this stream is on. Real life stressing me out. Man, don't let it stress you out. I say that, but I get stressed about shit too. So I'm just, I'm giving you some medicine that I can't necessarily. Here, let me find this flow chart for you really fast. Stress flow chart. Where's the stress flow chart that's so helpful? Well, this isn't a very big image of it. Nah, you can't read that, but I'll read it to you. Up here it says, do you have a problem in your life? No, then don't worry. You don't know? Then don't worry. Yes? Then it goes down to, can you do something about it? Justin Beard. I don't know. Then don't worry. No, then don't worry. Can you do something about it? Yes, then don't worry. Don't worry, Justin Beard. Liz Kimber said, if it helps, I'm 51 this year. Well, it's always nice to learn about people. I am 48. 48 years old. Boo -a -bop. Gnome Fight says, I remember one time I was stressed for you. It really stressed me out. It's like, what? Nothing's going on. This sucks, man. Doesn't Beard said, I'm 41 in July. Bilbo's 41 as well. And Jolly Rufus says, I'm not old. I just have wrinkles. Well, good. We were watching... So, Jasmine's mom got us to watch this Netflix show when we were visiting, and it's so bad. Um, and But it's so bad that we still kind of want to see how it ends. And so, watching it, and I realized one of the reasons why the acting's so bad... First of all, we switched it to German. We switched it to German. <laughs> like, halfway through the episode the other day, because I was like... I think the German voice acting, for the only time I've ever seen this happen, the German voice acting is actually better than the English acting. So that improved it a little bit. But I realized that one of the reasons why their acting is so bad is they all have so much Botox that you can't, they're, they're, none of their expressions change. They're just like completely same expression like, I'm freaking out right now. Or I'm very concerned. <laughs> it's just like... There's, there's no wrinkles. There's no, there's no, no movement. If you've got Botox, I'm not picking on you. I'm not trying to shame you, but, um, if you got Botox, you're probably not really good at acting right now. X surprised. Um, what else we got? MMO pug 
turned 46 in March. What day in March? I turned 48 in March. Um, twenty fourth. All oh, right on. Mine was nineteenth. Od turned forty in December. You're not even an old dude, man. Claim an old dude's gang and not even old dude. Orthelian, weird to feel like the baby at thirty six. Oh, we got a youngin in here. Droop. Is 38 also, also young and he stands 48 this December. I'm right on getting there. Turrican. just turned 45. I was around for that. Stabby Robots 47. Quicksand is 42. Talet's 43. Aramis is 46. Yep, our YouTube demographics are accurate. They've been telling us you're all a bunch of old farts. Daft Punk's 36. Yep, another youngin. Cracks bones. <laughs> Sounds like my knees. 44. Fielder at 55 in June. That's respectable. 55. You get a you get a tip of the pipe for 55. Dr. Midnight's 36. Yeah, so we we've got a handful of youngins in here. Means means you were you were teenagers when we were first discovering young teens and stuff when we were first discovering the uh the MMOs back in the day. Code and caffeine's 44 this year. And that's not bad. 44 is the new 30. You can advertise MM in nursing homes. We're going to we're going to be in the AARP magazine. Mm, Hashpipe said Zoomer here. The Hashpipe, how old are you again? You're a youngin. You guys need to do more marketing zoomers. Make a Eminem dance on TikTok. Yeah. Hashpipe's 35. You're not that young. I, for some reason, I thought you were like... I thought you were like 28 or something, Hashpipe. You're getting there as well. Have I had Mallard? It's a disgusting drink from Chicago. No, I haven't. What's it taste like? Did I make it with did I make it with lake water from the lake that it's on? Yeah, you actually you do make it I thought you were younger for some reason. Hash pipe. It's Swedish. What is this Swedish drink, Mallard? I'll look it up. Don't think I won't. Malort drink Sweden Gypsons Yipsons How do you pronounce that Jasmine Malort 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 Yipsons Malort Um Long produced in Chicago's Carl Yipson company all right, Wikipedia, tell me what it tastes like. Swedish word for wormwood. It's a brand of Basque liquor. How do you pronounce that, Jasmine? Basque? <laughs> okay. So far, their umlauts aren't really modifying the sound of their letters very much for an American. So supposedly he sold it door to door for medicinal and other purposes. And one legend says he preferred the strong taste because of years of smoking had dulled his taste buds.
my lord. It, it, from now, from now on, it is my lord. <laughs> my lord, tonight's the night you fight your dad. Is that their tagline? <laughs> Uh, Google says it tastes like gasoline, grapefruit, sweat, wax, fire, mineral oil. Okay. Have to get me a bottle of that then. Google has... I'm sold, Google. The other tagline is those pants aren't going to shit themselves. <laughs> oh no. Oh, that, that made me think of, I saw an article pass by. I didn't read it. I didn't read it earlier, but um, hopefully, is anybody taking a new weight loss drug? If you're taking a new weight loss drug, watch out. It's got some wacky side effects, apparently. One of which being uh, a lot of people just pooping in their bed and that does not seem worth it just chug metamucil metamucil is actually great um i i drink the like we have um it's called uh flow samshala it's like it's um what is that in english psyllium husks Psyllium husks. Um, and that's what I think Metamucil is made out of. And uh, I like it. I like it. Because it just it just makes it, you know, makes it where you got... We're, we're mostly old people in here. We can talk about this sort of thing. If you're a young person watching this or watching it on YouTube, I don't know what to tell you. It's something you're going to have to deal with eventually. But yeah, it makes it just makes it so you take nice poops the next day. Psyllium husks. Yeah, fiber is awesome. Fiber, Dr. Midnight said, been on the fiber game since I was 20. Stuff is magical. There is nothing wrong with taking really nice poops. Nothing to be ashamed of. <clears throat> Justin said, I've seen an advertisement on Reddit. Oh, for the, uh, for the, the new drug. Oof, yeah. Guess that's one way to lose weight. Yeah, I wonder is that is that what's going on? Cause wasn't that like a that used to be a problem with some folks. They would actually had some problems like taking they would they were taking like X lax and stuff as kind of like a um is like an eating disorder thing. That doesn't seem good. <clears throat> Um, clear mind, dark heart said, I'm down 20 pounds, but I have to wash the sheets every night. I don't believe you. Mr. Stabby the Robot said, I used to work with a woman who did that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't that something like it was, it was pretty tragic. It was like Karen Carpenter or somebody died because of that. I thought way back in the day. But in our age group, you know who that is. While well, we're talking about poops, uh, getting a bidet was kind of a life changer. I've heard that from everybody that's gotten one, Zukin. I kind of like, I kind of like Gross's um, sort of take on it, though. Get the fiber. Yeah, Justin, that's no fun. It's imminent potty humor day? What? Not humor. We're talking we're talking legit potty talk right now. Just a bunch of people in their forties and fifties with a few of you in the thirties. 
talking, talking about pooping. When you get to be our age, shit and serious business, kid. We're not kidding here. Talk about meat, beer, and all the things which are fun. <laughs> the precursors. The, the, the inputs for the pooping. Darga said, I do Guys Weekend every year where we rent a house and just game the whole time. This year we ran to grab groceries for the event and spent the entire ride back and forth talking about bowel movements and such. Yeah. I didn't read your comment. No, sometimes I, I miss your comments, Dark Inside. Did you hear the Throne of Liberty flop? I had big skepticism for it just based off the UI as 9 out of 10 games. You can tell if the MMO is made for mobile first just by looking at it. No, I didn't hear about it. I did not. I did not hear about Throne of Liberty flopping. Ollie's gonna have to let me know when the when the server's good to go again. Yeah, you know what, Dargit, that does sound like fun. Back when I lived in the U.S., I had some folks that I, I would hang out with pretty pretty regularly, but since I've left. Not so much. Not so much in terms of like the old crew where we'd uh, go on like road trips and stuff. Now I hang out with my garden friends. Which is pretty dope. What is the goal for today? Um, I'm just going to be playing around with some object placement. Nicodemus. Just adding some props to some areas. Once uh, once the server's... Excuse me. Been updated. Oh, that sounded horrible, I'm sure. Hey, Pettis. Once the server's been updated, um, then... I'll hop in and take a look and also check out the new merchant work that Ollie's been doing. I forget, Pattis. Have you placed a chair somewhere in, in, in here? Are there some chairs somewhere? In the inn. Okay, let me take a look. Yep, you're right. There they are. This is the inn. My only friend, the inn. Sean, question, are you tomorrow, Saturday, in the garden too because of the meat? Yes, I will be there um, tomorrow and Saturday. 
I can grab the meat from you guys. I have a lot of catching up to do in the garden. And Jasmine doesn't work tomorrow. And um, so it'll be a good day to get in the garden. My friend, I will be there. Let's drag these down here. Ciao. <clears throat> cool. Be there late afternoon? Okay. I we should see each other then. We should cross paths is all. We won't even look at it. Gross. Um. Do 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 do. So I may actually swap these stools for chairs. All right, we, we're going to have to find another topic as compelling as pooping. Get you guys reactivated. You're pretty energized when we were talking about BMs. Can you sit on chairs and benches or are they purely or ornamental? Uh, they're, they're ornamental for the time being. No plans to like have sort of that click to sit kind of thing. Are there toilets in Night Harbor? I think Pattis is, has put some little cubbies. We've got, we'll, we'll have some pots sitting around. Important question, next public test win. I don't want to ruin the surprise. Does dungeon dressing fall under environment artist level designer responsibilities or is it more a function of 3D artist, kind of a hybrid function? Um, <laughs> environment artists, 3D artist is kind of one and the same for us. Our environment artists, 3D artists, and they're also doing level design. We collaborate. What is the year time frame in Eminem? What do you mean? Like, how long does a year last? <clears throat> Man, it does taste good. Because toilets were in, weren't invented until the 16th century. We're, we're not, we're not following the earth timeline. Ark Wrathchild, uh no, we haven't we haven't discussed timeline. 
as soon as we can. Yeah, we didn't have like flushing toilets. We have buckets. Y you'll find buckets. Buckets. Matter of fact, I th I could have sworn I saw some buckets as well. Let me go get a bucket. Chamber pots. Yeah, buckets. Chamber pot bucket. Is there a year system like there was in EQ or D and D? Um, yeah, but. We're still we're still a little loosey goosey and in a conceptual phase there. But we've got ideas for um we got ideas for how we want to handle how we want to handle some of that. Names, we've got our unique names of the days of the week. Um, we've got a nice breakdown on our moon phases. So the the thing that we're going to do with the way that our days work and you guys can let me know if you think this is silly or crazy or whatever but um because we're going to have actual gameplay tied to moon phases and certain in-game days etc <clears throat> excuse me um the the um the moon cycle or sorry, the, the day of the week will map to one. So one real day, one real life day will be one day in game. But that day in game will repeat Groundhog Day style for the duration of one day in terms of our actual timeline. Does that make sense to you? Do you see what I'm saying? So that way, um, because our days only last 72 minutes, if something's going on that day, you actually have an opportunity. That made zero sense. Not even a little bit. Quick sound, I got it. <clears throat> Not even a little bit. Then I, I did a poor job of explaining it. Let me Let me take one more stab at it. Dr. Midnight says it makes perfect sense. Okay. So essentially, let's look at something really quick. Plop, 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 plop. Go. So, for example, if today is Raldin in game, the first day of the week, Then, and today is Thursday in real life for me in Europe. I don't know where you're at. Maybe it's different. Today, Thursday, the 25th of May, will be in game. The first day of the week, Raldin. All day today. And so if there's like a, if there's a special thing going on, like it's three full moons today which means that there's certain things that you can harvest that you can't normally harvest or lycanthropy just goes batshit crazy or the emissary from the fist has come down to visit here, then it will, those events will happen repeatedly. Every 72 minutes, that day will repeat itself for the duration of today, the 25th of May. <clears throat> Do 
That way, when you log in, you're not trying to you're you're not trying to like you know how hard it would be for us to have something happen on a specific in-game day and that only lasts for 72 minutes? <clears throat> uh, so there will be like 20 m m days per Earth Day, but it won't be tomorrow in m m until tomorrow in real life. Correct. So does that happen on a weekly basis? So if I miss it on Monday's event, do they repeat every Monday? Um, that'll be something that we have to look at it event by event. You know, like what what's the rate of recurrence for something like that? But we're looking at the frequency of like moon cycles and things of it like that to ensure that it happens frequently enough that it's not like, oh shit, I missed it the one time it's going to happen this year or the one time it's going to happen this month. So... <laughs> We'll, we'll be mindful of that. Um, and then, you know, we probably won't have a lot of super critical stuff mapped to like it only happening one day in game. Um, that type of stuff will be more like a, a week or multi-week thing. Oops. Hey, Jezebelli. Oh, enjoy your Lord of the Rings Online. Now let's see if this bleeds through. How are your wounds doing, speaking of which? Are your ribs still bothering you? I have to assume they still are. Um, gnome fight, 72 minutes, just timing wise, um, felt a little bit better. Jezebelli, I'm still getting to the point where I can, like, I, I still can't lay on my right side very well. At night, I'm still mostly sleeping on my left side. My shoulders just now still recovering. Not, not the best, but pales in comparison to what you're going through. Um, oh yeah, that too. Bilbo said, um, 24 hours can be divided by 20 um, and it's 72 minutes. A cooking place. Yes. Um, little kitchen area. I feel like proportions may be all over the place in here, but I'll have to come in and like actually look at it. Work like a forge. It should once I, I may have to like remove this and spawn it in properly uh, later, but this is kind of all placeholder. <sighs> Brown butcher. You're a little frisky today, aren't you? Am I skipping this TLP? I just, I haven't honestly had a chance to think about it. So yeah, probably. Hmm. When's it kick off? Yesterday? Well, then, yeah. Yeah, I'm probably missing it. It 
And counterlocking broke the guards. <laughs> How did it break the guards? Will forging be a thing? Yes, it will be a thing. Uh, we've even got, we've got some, like, uh, I could have sworn we've got some blacksmithing in already. Turkin. Is it based on skill or luck? It's based on uh, luck, so it, it's using random random numbers at the moment. Zukin was saying, uh, "Got to forge an anvil in already, and you can make some armor." Um, yeah, you can make, um, you can make like bronze play, right? Copper plate and chain, bronze plate and chain, you can send. Um, luck can be different ways. How is luck meant um, by forging? So uh, essentially, it's, it's, it's based on the number of skill points that you build up but you earn your skill points through uh, a roll which is basically doing a skill check and if you're successful well I think even if you're not successful but I'm not 100% sure and I'm also not 100% sure if we're keeping it that way um, but essentially as you participate in the system you increase your your skill points so we currently have an, an implementation in, but I, I, I'm fairly certain it's not the final implementation. So that'll be something to keep in mind. Uh, because the game, the game you play at the moment, uh, the forge can be a bitch. It's, it's only luck. That's why you ask. Yeah, I, I think some people probably feel that uh, a similar sentiment if they're rolling on something, if they're attempting to make something and fail their roll and lose their materials or whatever, they'll probably feel it is also. What in the world? That is some of Robert's other stuff. Some remix or something. I forgot to hit loop the playlist. Eminem soundtrack. Loop the playlist. Um probably been asked any chance for the in-game events that change the physical world uh yeah, yeah, yeah. so beat a world event city is destroyed etc yep 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 we're um we're gonna be looking at that type of thing um and you know we we're building with like tlp in mind as well so Uh, 
Oh, I see what you're saying, Turkin. Uh, yeah, right now we don't have anything that complex in. I'm not sure if we're going to do it. But yeah, the, the world will evolve over time. Um... Okay, it's... Let me put it in its proper place. Well, I don't even know what's going on there. Oh, no. I don't even know what the hell that was. Oh, I know what I just did. I was clicking on this thing. It probably doesn't belong in here. All right. That is a problem for future Pattis to deal with. Look, Pattis, I'm helping. Um, let me jeans. Oh, sorry. Let me lean says been a while since I checked in. If you had to assign a percentage to how done this game is, what would you say? Oh, I, I don't, dude, I don't, I don't know where I would start with that. Low percentage. Um, so were there some clear milestones for the team leading up to the stress test? What are the big milestones teams rallying on next? Uh, so yeah, we wound up turning the uh, stress test into the milestone, right? Like basically prepping for stress test was an easy one for us to turn into a milestone. Um, going to be super honest with you. We haven't been like, we haven't been a very milestone driven team to date. Um, that may change a little bit as we go, but we just kind of constantly chipping away at the overall, everything that we need to do. Um, the next milestone... I was just talking with, um, excuse me, dinner's got me burpy tonight. Um, was just talking a little bit with Ollie and Nick on this and looking at the, the best way to kind of package up a milestone. It was so easy to point to, Hey, here's the stuff that we want to get done for a stress test. Um, but the next one would be a bit more of content and game fo uh, systems focused, but essentially the the general gist of what we're targeting right now is uh the new dungeon with telekir the ashira dungeon um and if you look on a map here i'll I'll do i'll do like an ms paint real quick one way to kind of look at it is we're expanding the content and we're expanding the level range and then we'll be looking at game systems that uh, we want to kind of push forward a little bit to make them feel more like our own but if you look at Night Harbor, say we're in here in Night Harbor, and then we have, we've got Sungreet Strand, which is that, um, that area that with like the farms and stuff in it. And then we've got, um, Shaded Dunes. <sighs> Zukin said, whoa, whoa, whoa. You think you're Asmund Gold over here with MS Paint skills? Oh man. I think I've been doing it longer. What would he say? Like a MS Paint Andy or something? Anyway. Um, and so then we've got... We've got Telekir. Right? So if this is... Night Harbor... So 
silly that that would work that way, but whatever, MS Paint. So this is Night Harbor, and we've got a new yard. Got a new yard here, and we got a new yard here. And don't forget, we've got Worms Bane here. Um, then that gives us, uh, basically we've got with shaded dunes, we've got some higher level content here, right? And then with sun greet strand. Oh, that looks horrible. That is what it is. Um, then we got sun greet strand here, which is sort of that same growth and content level. And then, um, then we'll have Telekir here, right? And we'll allow for essentially progression this way, progression this way. Yep. Um, because then we've got. We've got Fallen Pass and then Fallen Watch up here. And we've got Death Valley going in here. And Glass Flats up here. So for this milestone, essentially, we are focused on getting this built out. Getting um, this built out. Doing a little, maybe a little Maybe some little touch up work in here, but you know, Shea Dunes functions right now. So we'll probably be doing a little bit of touching up where this dungeon goes in and stuff like that. Then a couple of us may sneak out, sneak over, be sneaky and do a little bit of uh, some deep dunes work underneath here. Yeah. Scary Green Castle's up here. It's for later. It'll be a future milestone. All right. So, but essentially focusing on just expanding the content up in levels. Um, yeah. So, select all. Boom. No, I'm not saving that. You crazy? Um, heard a lot about horizontal progression thrown about. What exactly does that mean? How does that contrast the traditional vertical progression? Um, so it's going to, I mean, it's going to be found in a number of options that we have. I can't, I'm, I'm not able to get into like all of the various gameplay, uh, changes that are going to be happening, um, on that front. Like I can't speak to specifically if we're going to have, um, certain, um, ability to special specialize in areas, or if we're going to have different ways that you can modify your character over time and kind of like progress out in something that's kind of like. A bit of a horizontal added into a specific vertical uh, but there'll be um, more so one of the things that we can do with the ashira dungeon that's going to be happening is um playing around with the first sort of concept of a monster city right so that um you could go in you can find ways to essentially faction up with the ashira and depending on where you get with the faction with the ashira that may unlock some things that they want you to do back in Night Harbor, right? So all of a sudden, the new Ashira dungeon, is it really a dungeon or does it turn Night Harbor into more of a dungeon, right? So there's going to be some playing around with that. Um, I think as we're looking at uh, our various trade skills and things like um, we were talking earlier about player housing, etc., that's going to all factor into the horizontal progression as well. 
Uh, will there be zone lines? Yeah, we, we have zone lines now. Matter of fact, whenever I'm allowed back in game, I could actually show you. Hold on one second. I gotta, I gotta do a little. Uh, or two. Ah, I'm typing as fast as I can. Sorry, guys. Hopefully, hopefully that it doesn't come off too snarky. Minimizing that, looking at chat again. Won't expansions add new areas and new levels? Uh, wouldn't that still be vertical progression and an ever-expanding world? Um, I, I think a degree of expansion is unavoidable. It's the degree to which we emphasize that. Um, and so, yeah. We want to we want to put more focus in horizontal progression and we want to put more focus in replayability via alts and things like that, but it's it's not like we don't want to add some new places to the world over time. There will inevitably be additional new areas and new systems and all of that jazz. And the other thing too is like the looking at the degree to which those new areas and new systems require you to be higher level versus there just being additional additional areas. So I think at the end of the day, it's going to be more about uh, at the end of the day, we can express our intent um, and then we'll see how things actually wind up feeling as we're as we're doing them and looking at actual execution. I like how to, I like how the microphone's perfectly mounted to the edge of the camera shot. I guess that's one way to look at it. Um, all right, we got this here. We got that there. Um, let's grab this guy here. Oh, hey. Thank you, Fielder. And uh, another thing on that front droop is um, another thing on that front will also be looking at how we how we expand the world because we we want to add more locations we want to deepen what's there um, we don't necessarily want to constantly add new continents and things that that. Uh, wind up sort of segmenting the the 
player base more and more and more over time. So, for example, we may introduce a new zone and that new zone may be, well, there's literally an entrance to a, a zone in the next zone over um, that probably won't be used for quite a while. There's a dungeon in the next zone over that's just going to kind of sit there for a while. Yep, so expansions can add new areas to existing cities and even new sections of dungeon within an existing dungeon. Yes, correct. That is, that's the target. Zukin said, I wonder what kind of, uh, wonder how much of a pain in the ass it would be to wrap the mic arm in some green material to try and chroma key it out. Um, it, it's actually not hard. I've done it. It's just, it's funny because I, I wrapped it and then it wound up looking even weirder. Because at least here, while it, it kind of ends in nowhere here on the edge of the frame, it, it's kind of easy to see what it is. And then I've, I've even wrapped the entire mic in, in green. Um, and I just wound up kind of tapping out and saying this is fine. Spaduncle said, Sage side, that's cool. So you guys are dividing your scenes into the theme of the area. Yeah, we've got we've got a bunch of sub scenes at this point. Um so we've got Docks, Garrison, High Point Terrace, Necropolis, North Newbie Yard, Sage Side, the Bins. The Bins is uh a place where we probably one of the few remaining places where we, we really haven't blocked anything out yet. Um, but this is gonna be more of kind of a, a sketchy Favala style um, sprawl that that kind of goes up through here. So it's a uh, a shadier area that um, will definitely be more more overtly dangerous whereas we've got dangers just kind of peppered throughout in here and in certain in certain areas, right? Like, so here, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys see some stuff that you probably may be aware of, maybe not be aware of. Um, but there's, there's stuff hidden under here already, right? So some of these buildings leave and in, lead into like networks and they're a, little, a lot more complex than you would, uh, realize. And then, um, <clears throat> there's already some, some dungeony action and stuff going on. Hell, even our newbie yard's got some scary stuff. So, <clears throat> Can you show us the underground fight club room or were you joking about the other day? I just showed it to you. I only showed it because I know Pattis has shown it before. So it's not a spoiler. Also, I know you guys forget things, so it's okay. What's the level range for the for the bends? Not sure yet. Not sure yet. I think some ideas have maybe changed on that. Um, I've, I've got the feeling it's going to wind up being a, a fairly broad level range. That looks like an office. Where I'm currently at is uh, more of like a charge of quarters deck. Uh, sorry, desk. If you're in the military, you know what charge of quarters is. Underground office fights. Yeah. I mean, that's what Fight Club was, wasn't it? Probably have to move some guys around. Let me check really quick. Oops, when was the last time I hit save? McTavish! Thank you for the follow. How long does this take to build nowadays? Oh, I'm not sure. I never I never have to run a build. That's a good Ollie question. 
I can show you how long it takes to load the data up, the design data for it. I just clicked the button now. And by load design data, I mean for me to manipulate it, not to like run it, you know, run the game. <clears throat> so Ollie told me not to grab latest until after the server was updated and then he disappeared. He's never come back again. Zukin said, I think the last build took two hours and 11 minutes. Let's, let's go with that then. Hmm. Unity's being silly. Usually it doesn't do this, but all right, cool. Oh, hey, placement's not too bad for this. This will work. So this is an NPC spawner. This is his desk. Oh, what, what am I doing that? I don't do that. I do this. I do this. Um, grab, they basically grab the coordinates of the new position, hit save. It's now saved to the database. One of the things we need to improve with the, our tools is uh, selecting these spawners can be a can be a pain in the ass sometimes. Uh, this is fascinating. I love it. Instantiate the mobs from a pool unless they are unkillable. I, pretty much all of our mobs are killable. So they all, they they all basically, the way it works is, <laughs> here, I'll show you. This is a spawner. So the green thing I've just played with is a spawner. Grab a new position, save it. This particular spawner, you see he's got a blue line here. Uh, it's because he's got a series of go-tos. So we, we can provide commands when they spawn in. Tells them what to do. So the NPC um, that spawns here knows to do these things, whereas his buddy over here doesn't. Um, and then it's pulling from this encounter table. So this encounter table is a list of, or a spawn table. It's a list of NPCs that can spawn and there'll be roles. And that's how we would like, it could be that this is just a red mantle guard 90% uh, of the time that a table has got a guard 90% of the time. And then 10% um, of the time, it's maybe a named or something, right? So it's all, it's it's relatively simple, relatively straightforward. Um, and all this is, is really just a little bit of an interface for, why are these guys in the air? Did something change? Um, turn them a little bit here, front position, save. Uh, it's just, essentially, it's a little bit of a interface for our database, basically, right? So these little green, green blobs we're looking at here are, um, they're just these entries in a database. John just made a static window. Need to check it out still. Oh, nice. Um, so statics are right now. We've we've got kind of a hacky way that we put doors and stuff in, but like a a door is part of our static system. So that's what I was doing on the last stream. I'll get that VOD posted to YouTube soon. But here you can see like these little pathways are NPCs moving. It's telling where NPCs move around. Like this, I think, is a farmer. Yeah, it spawns here and then it, it walks down here and goes down to the park, that kind of stuff, so. Uh, let me see, make sure nobody else is in an object at the moment, like these guys, right? So these guys are spawning in silly, silly places now that I've added objects here. So I go here. Grab this guy real quick, move him. 
what's really fun about working with with Pattis is uh, Pattis is comfortable in the database, which a lot of times art and design are pretty separate. Um, so artists aren't getting into the design database, etc. So when Pattis is doing um, doing work in an environment, and he like you know does what I did here, which is like maybe put some props in. If he looks, he's been good about updating their position and stuff, which is pretty awesome. If I'm not mista mistaken, I could have sworn you've been doing that, right, Pattis? Um, so that's that's one of those many ways I think that our our team's a little bit different than other teams I've worked on in the past. We're small enough that folks are comfortable wearing multiple hats and getting in a database and like Zukin Zukin gets in a DB and on the uh, character side, you know, what I mean? and so it's it's nice it's nice that it's not just always throwing stuff over the wall uh, between the disciplines and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Uh, people aren't afraid to get their hands dirty. Yeah, people aren't afraid to get their hands dirty in areas that maybe aren't their, you know, their their core area of focus is is the part that's really kind of cool. <laughs> Do you guys store much outside of your marina, like uh, JSON list for a certain dynamic stuff? No, I'm I'm fairly certain everything that we everything that we use is in the database um in one way or another or um in code slash one of the scripts that's being used within uh unity but i mean there there may be stuff like uh that's that's not necessarily that's not my wheelhouse so i might be speaking out of turn there may be um Something I'm not considering. Zukin says, I don't mind getting into stuff. I like being able to get things set up. Just want to know enough not to explode the game. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've got, we've got ways of recovering from exploding the game though. So that's been pretty cool. I remember I exploded the game pretty early on. Like, it was like... I, <laughs> I ran. I was I was working in you know because I just work in a live database, um, not in a local database. And so early on, I just overwrote the entire live database with uh, I forget. It was something like uh, we had a script to to be able to sync something over. What was the logic on that? How did I screw that up? I think there was like a, a script that ran to copy a version of the database over the database that you're using, but I did that over the live database. And so it like deleted a bunch of shit. I don't know. Anyway, Ollie fixed it. It was great. Ollie fixed it. It was no worries. So I was just like, all right, thanks, Holly. And then I I think Zukin did something similar before and somebody else did the exact same thing. Like I think we've we've all done that. Or at least a few of us have done that. That sort of thing before. So Do you guys use some sort of cloud thing like UGS since they bought plastics? I think we tried using plastic and then didn't like it. Um, so we just use GitHub.
Me gaming much these days? No, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I'm not. Um, I'm watching people game on occasion. I'm listening to the team talk about gaming. Um, I just don't... My time management is so... I don't know, like piss poor. Uh, apparently. That... If I, if I had the time to do some extra gaming, I would want to just be playing M&M probably. I wouldn't mind b playing some P99. If there, if there's ever a new P99 server, um, I'll absolutely just be forcing, like, it, it will, it, it, it will happen no matter what. Um, but, um the you know like the new zelda looks cool i just don't when am i gonna do it like i basically i've between the stuff that i, I do sort of around the house um the garden stuff that i need to maintain now that it's garden season and then work stuff i just i, I really haven't had the time have I ever enjoyed Lord of the Rings Online? Yeah, but not for very long, and it's been quite a while now. Same with D&D Online. Can't do EQ1 or P99 knowing Eminem is coming? Well, you've got a while. <laughs> you got a while. Playing Baldur's Gate 3 for now. Yeah, and see, there's a lot of old games I would like to spend some time playing as well. I know Baldur's Gate 3 isn't old, but... Larian does top-notch stuff. Yep. They are good. They absolutely earned their, uh, their crack at, uh, working on it. I got a, I got a kid out this bedroom as well. Turkin, for some reason, I didn't realize that. So I've, I've only played a little bit of Divinity Original Sin 2. And that was with, uh, I was doing that multiplayer with... with the young gentleman named Crackpipe that was in here earlier. Sorry, Hashpipe. I just called you Crackpipe, Hashpipe. Holy shit. That escalated quickly. See what happens when you don't come in here forever? I call you Crackpipe. I'm actually, I, I'm actually feeling flush on that one. It's rare that I just randomly whip out a Crackpipe. Ah, oof. Oh, I'm blushing. I'm blushing, Hashpipe. I, I know he's already out of here for now. He popped in for a little bit earlier and he's gone. He's not going to watch the VOD. No one tell him. My wife is like, what the hell are you watching in there? Oh. Oh, man. That came out so fluidly that I almost, that I almost, uh, I've got to wonder, like, do I know someone else that's named Crackpipe that I, maybe. <sighs> I'm a 90s kid, man. What can I say? I was a teenager in the 90s. Um, it's just, it's very natural for me. Freudian slip. 
90s were rough. Um, Spadunkle said, sorry if I keep asking tech questions, but did you guys start off using HERP um, or are you using something else for your pipes? Pun intended. <laughs> Yeah, we've, I think we've, we've always used HRP and then we tried, we looked at like URP or whatever. Um, and yeah, the, the exact details of it, I think are probably best spelled out by Ali. Um, if you have technical questions, never feel, never feel guilty about asking them, but I, I tend to direct people to our discord. Um, Ali and, and, and crew are really good about answering answering technical questions I'm just I'm just here to say inappropriate things apparently <clears throat> I'm still blushing Sorry, Hashpipe. Uh, I'm never going to live that one down. Would have been even funnier if Keebs was in here to hear that. Oh, jeez. So anyways. I played a bit of Div Divinity Original Sin 2 with my dear, dear friend, Hashpipe. Whose name I would never, ever screw up. <sighs> Jezebelli said Eminem Discord is incredible. Yeah, I mean, the team, the team really does try hard to, um, you know, keep an eye on it and answer your questions and. I think it's a fairly good resource if you're if you're um, looking for info, go in there and search around a bit. Put that chair next to the bed. Those are either small uh, beds or huge chairs. I was just looking at that. I wasn't going to say anything. We're gonna we're gonna run around in here at some point um, and figure it out. Keep in mind that as I place props and stuff around as well, eventually the uh, the experts will have to come in and clean all this shit up. And the bunk beds will be replaced with a... Uh, with a bed bed for some of these rooms. I think a lot of the, the props that we've got in as well I'm assuming Pattis, there's probably some rework that we're doing on a lot of this stuff. So it's mainly to help us start to get kind of a feel for what things look like. Can I pull yet? I haven't heard anything back from Ollie. So this is more place already, like instead of a proof of concept first pass stuff. Yeah, it's it's more it's more placeholdery, and then we'll be updating a number of assets and updating uh, updating as we go. Kind of like how the textures and stuff work at the moment, All right? So, you know, when I, when I've come in and done something like 
Wing Cogs area. The Curio Shop. It's just a lot of just reusing these same objects. Untextures, bookshelves, tables, blah, blah, blah. Just to kind of give you a little bit of a feel that the place is a place when you're in playing around. And then later on we'll do a... We'll do like a quality propping pass. Um... Will there be a waterfall somewhere and will there be a secret behind it? Old Man Lewis, yes. Absolutely. Hell, at this point, there may already be one or more. Um... What Biscuit say? Love the fact that the team will try answer all manner of questions. I've been asking Pattis some odd question as to why he does stuff the way he does. And he was so happy to tell me. Most upcoming games are real tight with any form of info and how or why they do stuff. Yeah, I mean we'll 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 learn. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's the wrong way to do things. Maybe we'll eventually learn that we should have never told you guys shit. Never said a word, but um, this is how we work. So for now, that's how we're just going to do it. We'll learn. We'll learn. We'll learn the error of our ways later on. If this is not the proper way to make a game. I have, uh, I've worked on a number of games in the past and we've never done it this way. So it's kind of fun to do it this way for a change. <clears throat> but uncle said you are inspiring a whole lot of new creators that much is for sure being able to see the process itself is inspiring well thank you for that that's that's a that's actually a nice compliment yeah so i mean we we get a lot out of it where you know we're not just doing it to do it we get a lot of uh we get a lot of value out of your feedback and some of the stuff that uh, <clears throat> some of the stuff that you guys have pointed out. And well, thanks everybody. Nicodemus said, "Liz, yeah, all the team members are real approachable. It's been an amazing experience from my point of view as a dev who's always wanted to do games." Um, Turkin said, in my opinion, it's a great way to do it. Uh, it's different than, uh, others. Spinocle said, I started learning Unity because of Eminem from probably, uh, four years ago. Fell in love with it as a hobby. Hebrew Hammer said, it really is phenomenal. Love how interactive devs and community are. Especially Zukin and Pattis. They're real friendly. Zukin's the friendliest. Zukin's Zukin's uh he's pro streamer. And Pattis is very professional. <coughs> Maybe it's not been four years. No, it hasn't been four years, but I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna call you out. Like, what are you saying? You've been working on this for four years? Oh man, we gotta, we gotta move faster. We gotta get going, chop chop. Chop 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 chop. Old Man Lewis, thank you for the follow.
Oh, I'm looking at John actually posted. John posted static placement tool. Mm, oh, interesting. Oh, 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 hey. Oh, that's going to be, that's going to be nice. Oh, cool. Cool. Any more of Patrick streaming? He has a lot to teach. Yeah. He's big brain. He got a big old brain hidden behind that beard. He's another pro. You act like making him MMOs hard. <laughs> what? What if we ever act like that? It's so easy. Here's a question. How much does putting everything into a relational DB help with visualizing systems? I imagine your items are like 234,000 rows. Not yet. I think we are, we're only at... Uh, Just over a thousand items in a DB. Oh, almost at two thousand items. Eighteen hundred and sixty-eight entry in our item database. But how's it? How's it? Um, how does putting everything into a relational DB help with visualizing systems? Well, I mean. Oops, not calculator. Um, for me, since I've seen a number of MMO kind of um, design toolings over the years, um, taking it back to like the old school relational DB setup is cool because it's, it's kind of my favorite that I've seen. Um, but... You know, it's easy for me at least to kind of visualize how we think or like how it structures something. So like we've got an NPC, we can immediately think about like what is an NPC composed of? And then we can easily then go, all right. And then how does NPC make it into the world, right? And so it's like NPC, some sort of a randomization table Right, so that could be called an encounter table, or it could be called, um, you know, NPC spawn table, or whatever. Right. So, but if you if you think about it in like old school uh, tabletop terms, it's like an encounter table, right? And in, in in this could actually be the way it would be set up, depending on how you're visualizing it, right? So you can visualize it from the point of view of NPC needs to be attached to an encounter table, which needs that, which then goes to, um, like zone spawn. All right. So this is essentially the spawner, which then, uh, you know, it, it's, it's not hard to visualize what data would wind up being here. So this is probably X, Y, Z. Right, for us it's is a day night spawn. So you get the coordinates like where is it spawn? It's it tells you what zone it's in. Right. So it's easy to just kind of think through all of all of the data that you would want to associate with each table, right? Just sort of logically. Um is it triggered? All of that, right? So so you've got these. Um and it's the same thing when you're when you're visualizing When you're visualizing what data would go into here, it'd be uh, probably the different NPC entries and then the percentages for them. Whereas an NPC's got a bunch of other stuff, right? But then the other thing to consider is, all right, when, you, when you're just kind of picturing it, it's okay. And so another way to also picture it is this this way oops make that 
sticker. Boom. 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 And then boom. All right, so I imagine that makes everything very modular too, where you can add anything you need without too much trouble. Yeah, so right, like um, you'll see that if you look at the way that we structure our zone spawns. So if we look at our zone spawn table here, uh, a lot of this function or some of this functionality just didn't exist when we first set it up, right? And so it's modular enough that uh, essentially we can just add that in, right? So we've got spawn group, HID, and that's how we define, um, you know, essentially this part of it, the encounter table, the spawn group. Um, day, night spawn flags were added over time. Um, we've got our spawn count, right? So it's how many of these, how many NPCs actually spawn here. Uh, that works really well when we're doing our different uh, spawn types, right? So it can be PNT is point. So it, it spawns exactly at that point or does it spawn in a volume? So if you look at our new BRs and some of our bigger areas, like if you're going through Shaded Dudes, we'll have these massive volumes that allow us to then spawn like in a box or in a, in a sphere, in a radius. And then when we added that functionality, it's, um, all right, so how do we define the box? Well, length or radius, and then width, height, the facing of the box, um, you know, and so you just kind of, you're, you're able to add that functionality in, and it's the same thing, um, with its own spawn command, which is harder to kind of visualize in a database. Um, but you know, cause it really does help to have an interface here because we've got like 20, 30 different commands that we can use. Right. But it just, so there are certain things where, um, it's good to have Vi like actual tooling to go along with the uh, database. And that's what we were just talking about. John just added that for our statics, which for us, if you look at a system like statics, um, statics are everything from doors to interact. Essentially they're interactable objects that we put in the world that are a static part of the world. So like the spike trap in the dungeon is a static. Um, we have torch holders where you can put your torch, like the torch item that you have into the wall and then it holds it. Um, and then, you know, statics just basically they key over to a static state, which then helps us define the actions and transitions and, and things like that for static. So, um, but yeah, spike trap seems to have been fixed now. Oh, tight. Um, Um, does the industry still use the term mobs? Um, are all mobile objects in games? Um, yeah, mobs, pretty common, common term. I tend to, I tend to call the mobs NPCs generically at times. So, but I think I, I'm just kind of goofy in that regard. Most people call the like static, like merchants and guild trainers and quest givers and blah, 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 NPCs. And then baddies are called mobs because they're a bit more mobile, I guess. Um, but I mean, in theory, they're all mobile objects and they're also all non-player characters. So whatever. Um, yeah. So, but the, the interesting thing is when you're visualizing this now, you know, this be, this becomes An NPC, yay. And then you can think about like, oh, NPC's got a sword, right? So then there are other considerations. This NPC is gonna need some loot, right? So how are we handling loot? And so for us, we've got a loot table. We've got an item table and we've got an NPC loot table, right? And so it's like item NPC loot. And then it's easy enough to just go, okay. So we set something up here, then it attaches there, and then it attaches there, right? So it's 
it's honestly once you start like deconstructing the various needs um it's not it's not super hard to kind of mentally visualize the breakout of all the games needs sorry i'm digging around for some shit that i can't find over here so now i'm babbling like a weirdo um right and then you know this is the item table but an item table then all right so but items attach to items table so items um Then what makes up an item? Mr. Savvy said playing with EQMU taught me a lot about how backends uh, for games work. Yeah, absolutely. Super educational. I mean, thank God for the emulator scenes out there. Um, it's a big part of why we have a team. And the, the experience, like the knowledge that you gain from working on emulators for these games is extremely relevant and extremely valuable. Extremely valuable. Like it's legit game knowledge development. Excel is a fun game. Is spelunking in a database like playing with spreadsheets? Yes. Is loot um, by specific NPC or NPC type guard undead? We can do um, we can do loot by, um, we can do loot by race, class, level, zone, a combination of those factors, just specific to the NPC itself. Uh, so we've got options on that front. Um, so if we want, if we want all humans in the game to drop, uh, something from an item like uh, uh, essentially an item table. Um, then we can. Um, if we want all humans of a certain level range to do it, we can. If we want um, NPCs with a certain tag on them, we can. So, so if you look here, we've got T for tag, so bandits. Um, we've got T for tag. Uh, the tag bandit shaded dunes um and so it tags we can tag things just however we want um on npcs we've got um specific we've got zombies all zombies in the game uh between levels five and nine so including level five and nine so <clears throat> Five through nine, uh, we'll drop this item, that kind of thing. So, but yeah, so essentially, if you, if you just kind of get used to thinking in, in these terms, um, then you'll slowly figure out structures that make sense to you that feel feel good for you, right? Because you'll find you'll find that a lot of stuff is just kind of foreign keyed over. So like NPC may have something, you know, there may be like a a race table that is pulled in here, right? So there's all sorts of stuff that kind of. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, that was the thing that we added. Uh, Zukin said, Robot, don't forget about items dropping when you use specific abilities. It's a cool feature that I've never seen before. Yeah, so we're trying to... Um, trying to find... I, I'd started on the newbie quests and was using a lot of generic kind of drops. Um, or sorry, actually. A mix of generic drops, but then there are like specific kind of drops like there's a skeleton jawbone or whatever in there. And more and more, I was having to make these specific drops that were really used for like one class. 
Um, though with something like a skeleton jawbone, other people could in theory use that. That's pretty straightforward. But then the like the thing I was thinking was, wouldn't it be cool if it was if you're an archer? It would be cool to say like, bring me back a precisely pierced skull or something like that. And it's like, how does how are we gonna do that shit, right? Because we're not using a lot of like weird flagging and stuff like that in the background. Um, and so uh, then we asked Ali, I was like, hey, can we have it so that when an ability procs or a certain ability is used, there's a percentage chance that it then drops an item based off that. Um, and so the what he wound up doing was, um, if we look at where it's placed, we'll show you. Um, let me see if I can find one really quick. Cool, here. So essentially, um, it rolls on death as opposed to rolling prior to death, it rolls on death. And when it rolls, it checks to see if this condition has been applied to the NPC. And so within the abilities, um, we have the ability to add a condition, that, a buff condition that gets applied to an NPC. We can also do it on zone conditions, which is interesting, we haven't used it yet. So, and then bam, it'll, you know, like in this, for the spell blade, um, it'll see if if you've got um, uh, essentially if you proc uh, your ability, your low level ability, uh, then it will leave scorched remains, that kind of thing. So it's just kind of fun to personalize the quest a little bit more, but still have the items feel natural and normal. Uh, because in theory, I'm a spell blade. I proc. I scorch the skeleton's remains. The NPC dies. My group mate goes to loot it and sees that it's on there. So it's not like it's just a specific like client side uh, depiction of a item or whatever, so. Hmm. Um. Uh, Spadonko, I actually don't, I don't, I don't know where we're at with that. So is the loot function called dynamically after death NPC or is it on the increase? Oops, man, sorry, I'm so burpy tonight. Um, it's it's both. We have the option to do both. Sean art streams, yeah, <laughs> super good. Anyways, um, hopefully the relational DB thing makes sense. Uh, it's an area that I find a lot of fun to think about, so that's why I was like, ah, I'm happy to do some doodling. Um. What else do we have keyed on, a, on an NPC? Yeah, so like faction would be another table, right? Like, oops, oops. But yeah, once you once you kind of get used to these structures, like I think the first the first um, relational DB structure that we discussed, just so that we'd have an example to discuss, was like uh, I think I started it in like Google Google Sheets on my phone while I was on a plane ride, and it was just like, oh, here's a bunch of tables we should look at, and then we just kind of went from there and started iterating on it. Uh, do you guys use a tool to visualize this DB like mermaid? Um, no, we've, we've started, uh, we've started some stuff in house. I know we've had some recommendations from folks on like different tools that we could use to visualize it. Um, and Ollie's got some specific feedback as to like why we haven't used those and where we're at with things and what we want to do moving forward. We've, we've started here, like if we look in here, we've started playing around with some stuff in here in the past. Um, so if we look at, 
It I I really haven't used it much, so Right, so we've started building different visual visualizations in the past. But I just for me it's it's easy to work in the DB for now. And then later on, um, depending on where we get with some of the front end stuff, then maybe switch over to it. But there'll be there'll be definitely be um things that are made that are a lot easier to work with, like abilities are spread across like three or six tables so it's it's very possible that in getting a, a better visualization for it, it's a lot easier than to right to base to to work with them um but we're not really there yet so it's just easy for me to do this and then um i know nick does a lot of like a lot of work in SQL and, and runs really cool little scripts and stuff to be able to do a lot of stuff very, very fast and, and you know, very efficient way, so. Yes, but Uncle, I mean, we're, we're slowly working on the tools front. Um, I think for the most part, the everybody that needs to get into DB is pretty comfortable with the DB now. And um, first and Luna and, and you know, uh, have been learning some nice SQL tricks from Nick. And then I'm the old man in the group. So I'm very much like old, old dog, old tricks. Um, but eventually I'd like to brush up on that as well. So, um, let me see. I mean, I can, am I allowed in game? Is stuff good? Let me check bug discussion, see if anything blowed up. Let me just pull latest and see what happens. Pulling, pulling, pulling. Let's see what happens. Ooh, man. I'm looking forward to sleeping tonight. I don't know what the hell happened last night. Oh, that's what I meant to look at earlier is how loud's the music. I'm assuming it's been loud enough for you guys. All right, so now let's go pop into a different scene. Did you guys discuss as a team utilizing any advancements in AI to help workflow or is that like a whole can of worms? Um, there, there are certain things for brainstorming or uh, things like that that we've looked at it for. Um, so like one of the things that was a fun thing I did with uh, chat gpt was take a big chunk of our lore specific section of lore and paste it in there and then ask it to point out inconsistencies because it's kind of a lot of referencing different things in a timeline and it was cool because it was like here are five inconsistencies that i found it's like oh shit that's actually pretty helpful thanks because it, it kind of jarred the like oh let me get thinking um you know, and if you're looking for fiction or whatever, it's it's a great way to go. Oh man, I remember there is a reference in this one source book about blah blah blah, and they had a cool idea, and you can ask it like, "Hey, in second edition of blah blah blah, what was?" Eh, and then you know, it's just like tells you, it's like, "Okay, cool. I didn't have to go digging through like PDFs or whatever to find that." Liz said the music is exactly right, loud enough so that we can hear it, but you aren't. Um, 
hear it if you aren't speaking and quiet enough so it's not uh, fighting when you do. Oh, cool. Random stuff's always a good way to kick in a old creative juice. Yeah. Yeah, so in, in that regard, it's good. Like having it write a quest or dialogue or anything like that. It's, nah. Nope. Not feeling it. Using it to make NPCs more dynamic. Nope, not at this point. But it's so far to me, it's been handy in the same way that it was handy when Wikipedia became a thing. You know, it's handy when Google be, uh, became a better search engine. The game says I use Chad GPT to add uh, flavor to my tabletop games. Chad GPT, I need a list of general store items for this town or what would a level three cobalt rogue have in its pockets? Yeah, that's the type of stuff. Again, I think it, it kind of falls in that same, same vein of things. Um, it's great. It's a great little brainstorming tool uh, because there are other, like if you're doing tabletop, there are already PDFs that you can buy that provide tables um, that help you with that, right? So. So this zone is being worked on now. Um, we were talking about Milestone earlier. This zone's getting some love. Simon is currently working on um, getting this area set up over here. And then we'll be working his way across the zone. Breezy dreams. Thank you for the follow. Bumbra, welcome back. But let's go. Um, zone night harbor. It might be interesting to generate 100 conversations villagers would have in this town. So I think the challenge there would be one, it's got to understand who the villagers are. So you've got to be able to feed in enough context for it to feel personalized to what you're doing. Um, otherwise it'll be sort of generic. Um, two, then you've got to do something with those conversations. And so is the formatting of the conversation, what, what you would actually need um does it understand how conversation flow should work in your context um so there there's some challenges kind of like that it's kind of like the same thing as if you're to say chat gpd make me a quest does one does it understand the context um of the world that you're working in specifically two does it understand how the gameplay works um and gameplay is not just from sort of player expectations point of view, but also from the point of view of like how you structure your content relative to gameplay for your context. Um, so does that make sense? I, I think it'll eventually get there, but it's going to be really interesting to see like Nicodemus just said, it's going to be really interesting to see how you set up context-specific parameters. And I think if you're able to, if we're able to figure out that part of it and also the, um, the input, then that'll, that'll be good. Callahan 11, thank you for 15 months. Jezebelly, hey, look at you. You got a gift sub from Nicodemus and Binks BTW also. Oh, interesting. Torches are flickering at a distance now. 
Oh, that was also abrupt. Pettis, is this being discussed in Slack? say looks like Morse code we'll pause this in favor of in-game sound That way you can hear some scampering and stuff as well. Uh, there aren't any light triggers in Night Harbor yet, so I'm not sure what's going on there. It's got to be distance related. Jaden Fire, howdy. I'll just run there. Um, Nicodemus, I think we we'd have to look again. Um, the chain the times haven't changed. I think it was just maybe some lag or something as I was loading in, or I think something wonky is going on. That happens from time to time when I'm playing an editor instead of playing the client. So if we go to where that farmer was, he'll be doing his thing. Um, he'll either be doing his thing or he'll already have done his thing. And then be working to do his thing again, I guess. So let's fly. But you can see some other people doing their thing. Here, we'll have somebody else doing his thing over here in a sec. Those of you that are new here, if, if you're like, oh, it's looking, you know, it's pretty choppy. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm playing an editor at the moment, so it's, uh, it can be a bit, a bit chopperific. So, uh, if I repopped a zone, reload zone, then, uh, we'll probably see that. We'll probably see that farmer spawn somewhere around here. Oh. Yeah, I'm just guessing based on where that spawn point was. Turkan, choose Bismogen. We got some roamers moving around in here as well. Um, before, because I was just in the scene and doors are static, so they're spawned dynamically. Um, you didn't see any of these doors before. Uh, when I was really young, we used to use some XYZ commands on the emus. That was basically kind of like this pathing setup in a DBS point. Yep. It is very much a tried and true approach. Yeah. So to answer your question, these are, these are pretty, these are pretty small. These are like the, uh, garrison style beds. And then we'll have something a little bit more luxurious for some of these rooms.
Oof. My editor's super laggy tonight. Sorry, guys. And those of you that made it in for the, uh, for the public stress test, you can attest. It runs a little bit smoother than this when you're actually in the client. I swear. You guys, you use any uh, tools like Gina or Gaia for generating these realms? Nope. Everything we we are we're making an artisanal small batch MMO. Everything is lovingly handcrafted by by our wonderful game fabricators. So yeah, not we're not using a ton of objects, but wanting to uh, at least allow you to get kind of a sense of what the utility is of some of these. Are the doors not shutting? Hmm. Doors have been wonky lately. I need to look into it. Um, so you get a little bit of a sense of like what some of these areas are used for. And then if we were to combine these with um, with our mud actions, so like, you know, when you click look, we can give a text description of the environment that you're in. Um, so when you're out here, we could have it just say, you know, in here it'd be like, you're in the, you're in the courtyard of the Red Mantle Garrison. Um, but then, when you're in one of these other areas, it'll be, um, you know, it could be like, oh, you're in a storeroom, blah blah blah. Or the difference between the one, this room, and the other room is, uh, we just. You, you get a look and we could just put it in here and it'll it'll say something that's uh, essentially uh you know the the bedding in room in uh the bedding in this room looks to be a higher quality you appear to be in the officers quarters right yeah so we we define we define uh we don't have a visualization in game at the moment so it's not it's it's not as intuitive to work with, but if you go into this table we have here, which is a uh, zone mud action, right? We can come in and you go, you look here, and so um, we can just add these in, and it's basically just coordinate driven. A bespoke, highly curated, and handcrafted environment for your adventuring needs. You do have marketing skills. Look at you, Nicodemus. Yeah, Liz, it's it. You know, it doesn't take much to start to make it feel a little bit like what what we're thinking, right? So, again, when when we look at our overall level of fidelity we're going to we're starting low and then we'll find where the sort of where the the breakpoint is in terms of needs right if we don't need to put 5000 objects in this courtyard to make it feel like a courtyard let's not let's not do that if we find that just you know a few boxes and barrels here and there and then as we get new objects if it's you know whatever like horse tack or you know uh a barrel and a fire, whatever it is, just if, if we can, if we wind up finding that people are fairly happy with our minimalist approach to objects, put a map on the wall, some paintings, tapestry here and there as we get them, um, then this approach, I think, 
because of the way we're working with mud actions and using text to kind of give you more insights without actually making all the assets and just the way that if we you know if if you're from an old school mmo backgrounds you're kind of used to some of this and your imagination fills in a lot of the blanks um then that if that continues to work like folks have been pretty happy with it but i i, I think there's probably some questions about like okay this is cool but like when are you going to put all the objects in or whatever it winds up being if we find that people are well you know if people are cool with the approach that we're taking generally speaking um then that's going to be one of those things that allows us to really be able to deliver this in a reasonable time frame with a with a team size it's not 200 people so but yeah it's uh it's funny i'm glad we uh, it's i'm glad i used the mud action example um because oops because it's a nice reminder to throw some in here so Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, naturally that then works with the, the stuff that we've done in the past where, so say you come in here, you open the door, you look in, you look, it's a storeroom, you've snuck in here and we've sent you to basically dig into one of these boxes. Um, then that's, you know, that's when we look our, use our look command and slash inspect, and you may have to use slash pry, right? And it's going to tell you over here, it's going to be like pry what? And I have to hold something that I can actually use in prying, right? So I hold my dagger then and I can be pry box, right? So and go from there so those of you that are unfamiliar with uh some of the gameplay that we put in like uh let's see go to zone we'll go back up to the front Um, I'm sure if more FPS, like over 60 would benefit game. I mean, it, it's funny when I run, like you can see how choppy it is. Well, it's not that bad at the moment, but choppy it is an editor. When I'm running it in the client and I'm getting nice FPS, it does add to the experience a lot. But uncle, you are very welcome. Thanks for asking great questions. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Um, Yeah, so just as an example, for those of you that haven't seen it before, um, if such a person exists in here. Yeah, I'll be back on Tuesday, Spaduncle. So if you want to come hang out with us again, please do. So if I look, look, and you see it here, you see an old well. Its crumbling exterior betrays its age, and it appears to be as old as the rest of the ruins nearby. Right, and so then I can inspect the well. You see water deep below. Um, taste water. I have been poisoned. And it's just got a placeholder ability on it. Um, just to test out the system. Oh man, I got poisoned. I got poisoned by the water. Um, time set 7 p.m. Activate my torch. 
Just got back from your first walk since the accident. You're sore. Oh, man. It's good that you're getting out there, though. Um, but now if I look, so look, I see the well, inspect the well. You notice some moss growing on the rim of the well, dark water shimmers in the moonlight deep in the well, uh, slash take moss. Oh. Take moss. Am I able to? We just refact. Oh, it's probably on cooldown. There we go. Yeah, so that's the kind of stuff that we have over here that can add a lot more. Um, um, a lot more kind of interaction and detail to those simple object layouts. You die from dysentery. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Do not go randomly drink the water. Thank you for five months, TDJ. Uh, is there a detect poison spell in game? I don't know if there's detect poison yet, but it would have been helpful there. Will there be any ability hits for hungry and dehydrated or will it just be spam? Um, if you are dehydrated and hungry enough now, it, it impacts like move rate. Um, I believe it's got a stat impact, but that's something that we're going to be talking about in more detail soon. Uh, we were actually just kind of BSing about that this week. Um, yeah, so, all right, we're, we've just rolled up on, we're getting right at 1030. I am tired. I am going to get ready for bed. Um, and I want you all to have a very wonderful uh, Memorial Day weekend, I believe, in the U.S. And then we have, over in Europe, we've got um, a bank holiday on Monday as well. So, is it, what is it? It's not Ascension Day. I forget. Um, but it's a, it's a bank holiday. So I will see everybody on Tuesday. Don't worry, us Canadians will be working. The only people in the world working on Monday. Enjoy it, Borat. But yeah, everybody have a wonderful weekend. I'm going to get some garden time in. If you, if you want to see random garden picks and shit like that, you can go to my... Loving Robot Discord. Otherwise, hop into Eminem Discord with the rest of your questions. Don't forget to join our mailing list if you haven't already. I think we're like over three and a half thousand or something. That's dope. Um, check out VODs on YouTube. It, when you join our Discord, keep an eye out for notifications for other streamers. We got a bunch of we got a bunch of people on the team streaming now. So check those out. Fielder, take care have a great one john take care liz biscuit have a great night see you soon amaris you have a great weekend as well jezebelly you're very welcome i hope you continue to get to feeling better Garden pigs on my OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. Take care, Nicodemus. Thanks again for your generosity and for hanging out with us. Enoch, have a great weekend yourself. Oh man, I am so sleepy, guys. Ooh, that Red Bull. It, I, I drank it too early. It definitely. It gave me wings too early. Icarus effect. <laughs> Night Zukin. See you, DDJ. Where's Rune? Um, he's probably sitting on his on his little mat that he's got to sit on now. We're getting very disciplined with that young man. We're getting disciplined. Shit. 
had several 15 minute stare downs on our on our walks today. We're gonna we're gonna get him behaving like a true gentleman. Uh Jasmine takes him on walks in the evening while I'm streaming. So but she's off work tomorrow, which is awesome. So we get a four day weekend together. <sighs> Alright, guys. You're welcome, Talat. I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and push the button now. Quit yawning in your faces. Everybody have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe. Have fun. Maybe get some fresh air. And I will see you on Tuesday.